Hello, everyone. Um, this is the recorded version of uh, what we discussed in the last lecture. I actually forgot to press the record button here. So, uh, and at the same time, some students wanted to have a, a video of the recorded version on the Blackboard. So, I'm uh, having, I'm re recording it, uh, and this will be available on the Blackboard. Now, uh, what we discussed in last class was, um, in the previous lecture, was about some uh, proofs. Uh, there were proofs like contradiction, proofs like contrapositive. Now, in this class, we will be discussing uh, induction. So, induction, uh, induction uh, takes its inspiration or motivation from uh, uh, this example, which is a person uh, is trying to climb an infinite uh, ladder. So what happens is that uh, he first, the step first is to climb this first rung here on the ladder. And when, once he's able to do that, he just climbs to the next rung. So the entire process can be summarized with these two steps. We can reach the first rung of the ladder. And if we are able to do so, then we keep on doing this continuously. That's following this second step. If we can reach uh, a particular rung of the ladder, then we can reach the next rung. So you, you keep on doing this, the second step, till you uh, reach to the desired uh, step or desired rung in the ladder. Now, this is the concept of mathematical induction. So the principle of mathematical induction, we have to prove a proposition. We have to prove a proposition. And we represent it symbol symbolically with P of N. And this, uh, we have to prove that this is true. So for proving that this is true, we follow these steps. One is the basic step. Uh, where we typically start by uh, substituting one uh, instead of n. And if that comes out to be true, then we move on to the next step, which is inductive step. And we pick up any arbitrary value k, and we assume that this is true. Now, while assuming then that, that this is true, if we are able to prove that p of k plus 1 is also true uh, using this information, then we are qualified to say that the entire proposition P of N, which we have to prove is, uh, is true. Now, it's just like the basic step is the first rung in the infinite ladder. And uh, inductive steps are any, uh, any arbitrary rung that you pick on your own choice. And if you are able to see this trend that is p of k any uh, arbitrary value k is uh, giving you p k plus one then you can say that p of n is true or you can say that we can climb the infinite ladder now uh, symbolically uh, this entire process can be represented like this where p of n, this thing represents the basic step, and you end it with the induction process. And that has a universal quantifier. That's for all values of k. If p of k implies p of k plus 1, then this entire thing uh, in conjunction implies that the proposition which we had to prove is true. Now, one of the thing about uh, the induction is the the reason induction works is because of uh, a property called as well ordering property. What well ordering property says that mathematical induction is valid because of the well ordering property, which states that every non-empty subset of the set of positive integer has a least element. So, what does one mean by that? Let me give you an example. Uh, so 
So if we have So if we have a set, let's say a set of positive integers, so its least element will be one. So it will start, one will be the starting point. Similarly, if we have another set, which is n it, uh, belongs to a set of positive integers such that n is greater than or equal to four, then here the least element is going to be four and you will start from four. So this is going to be the least element. So it's not necessary that the basic step that you follow uh, in the induction process is always going to be, is always going to be the, so is go going to start from one. So that's what is uh, meant by the well ordering property. That every non empty subset of the set of positive integers has a least element. So in the first example, in the example of positive integers, the least element was one. In the another example, which is where uh, and belong to the set of positive integers such that uh, such that n was greater than or equal to four. So in that case, the least element was uh, four. Now you can also say that the similitude of the induction process is like that of an infinite uh, le infinite a long chain of uh, uh, dominoes and if one dominoes uh, if, if one domino falls down then it will also cause the another domino to knock over and this process will continue uh, forever now if you pick pick any uh, arbitrary domino k here then you can say that if this no the domino knocks over then it's also going to knock over the k plus 1 th uh, domino. So this is exactly the process of uh, mathematical induction. Uh, the falling over of the first domino represents the basic step, and then the uh, if k at domino knocks over, then it represents the induction or inductive step. And if all of this is true, then we can say that P of n is true, which is that nth domino will knock over. Now let's uh, do some examples and it will become clear with uh, examples. Let's try to prove this. So the P of n over here is the summation of I running from one to n, and it states that if we have n number of uh, integers, then the sum is equal to n times n plus one by two. Now, let's try to prove that. So what it's saying is that the proposition is is that we have to prove p of n, which is the summation of i running from one to n is n times n plus one by two. 
Now, since it's talking about integers, the least element will be one. One is going to be the least element. Then, let's try to verify it for the, let's try to verify it for the basic step, which is P of one. P of one. So if we replace N with one, uh, this becomes one times one plus one by two. So if we have just one number, the summation of it will be just one because it's only one number and it's one. So let's see whether this also is in complete alignment with this, that this also turns out to be the same number. So this will be one times two by two. So this will be one. So our basic step is true. Now on this, what we have to do is we have to see whether it works fine for the inductive step. So in inductive step, we assume P of K is true, which means we assume that the sum of k number, which is 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5, so on to k, is k times k plus 1 by 2. Now, using this information, we'll try to find what is going to be p of k plus 1. Now, there is a difference. If we directly, if we directly put the value of k plus one in this, it will be k plus one times k plus one plus one by two. But that's exactly what we have to prove. So you, we have to prove this using induction. Let's see if this works out using the inductive process. So in other words, what we have to prove is P k plus one, which is one plus two plus three plus four, so on to k plus k plus one is equal to. We have to prove this. That is equal to k plus one times k plus 1 plus 1 by 2. Now, we already have this information from the previous step, which is the summation of k numbers from here to here. This is equal to k times k plus 1 by 2, which is an assumption, and we'll add plus k plus one here. So this will become, this will become, so this will become k times k plus one by two, multiplying two to the numerator and denominator, this will become plus two times k 
k plus 1 by 2. So this will be k times k plus 1 plus 2 times k plus 1 by 2. So this will be, since k plus 1 is common, k plus, this will be k plus 1 times k plus 2 by 2. We can rewrite this as k plus 1 times k plus 1 plus 1 by 2. So you can see that this over here, this entire thing, and this is the same. And this is the same. K plus 1 times k plus 1 plus 1 by 2. And this is the same. So since we are able to do it using in, inductive step, then we can, we are qualified to say that p of n is true. Now, let's uh, have a look at another example. In this example, we have to prove that for all positive integers n, n is less than 2 of n. So the base or least element will be, element is going to be 1. And let's, uh, let's try to see how it works. So for all positive integers, we have to prove that p of n is p of n that's n is less than 2 raised power n. We have to prove this. Now in the basic step, what we'll do is we'll start with we'll start with one p of 1. So if we substitute 1 here, 1 is less than 2 raised power 1. So it's true, because 1 is less than 2. So we'll move to the next step, which is the inductive step. So we'll assume p of k is true, which means k is less than 2 of k. Now, if we add k plus 1 on both sides, this will be k plus 1 is less than 2k plus 1. Now, we know from the inductive step, 
from inductive step so, sorry from the basic step we know that one is less than two raised power one and at the same time we know that one is the first basic step and then there can be k number of steps in the process so if one is less than two raised power one then one for sure is less than two raised power k also if not less but at least less than or equal to two raised power k uh, so here So here, the entire step, the entire, this entire process, if we represent it using the infinite ladder, this will start with one. So this entire thing, so this entire thing here, uh, if we have to equate it, here we can see using this if one is less than two raised power one then one for sure is going to be less than or equal to two raised power k so we can write that this is less than two raised power k we can claim it we can claim two raised power k plus two raised power k so this will be So this will be k plus one is less than two k plus one, and then we are claiming two k plus two k using the information from the uh, basic step. If one is less than two raised to power one, then one is surely going to be less than two raised to power k. Um, then we can rewrite this as k plus 1 is less than 2 raised power k plus 1 less than 2 times 2k. So this will be k plus 1 is less than 2k plus 1 is less than when bases are same powers are added, this will be k plus 1. So if you have a look at this, and this you can say that k plus one is less than two raised power k plus one so this is exactly what we had to prove we had to prove n is less than two power n and using using the inductive step that's the way by, by assuming p of k is true, we were able to prove that p of k plus 1 is true. So this is the end of the inductive step. And we were able to prove that p of k implies uh, P of k plus one. Therefore, we can say that p of n is true. Now, let's move on to another example. Now let's move on to another example. So in this example, we have to prove that 
2 of n is less than n factorial. And for every n greater than or equal to 4. So here the least element is before, and, and that's the thing that we are be using in the basic step. Now, in the basic step, in the basic step, uh, let me do it uh, on one note. Let me do it on one note. So we have to prove that 2 of n is less than n factorial. And n is greater than or equal to 4. So we'll begin with the basic step. Where since n is the least element, therefore we'll put 4 here. So we'll see whether this is true. So 2 raised to the power 4, we'll see if it's less than n factorial. So a factorial of any number, uh, let's say the factorial of 5, is represented as 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. Or the factorial of 4 is four times three times, two times, one. So in short, a factorial of n is n times n minus one times n minus two, so on to four times, three times, two times, one. So here, we'll see whether this is less than uh, four factorial. 4 factorial will be 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. So this is 16, and this is 24. And 16 is less than 24. So this, which is the basic step, holds. Now after this, we'll move on to the inductive step. In the inductive step, let's assume that P of A is true, which means 2 raised to the power K is less than K factorial. So after this, what we'll do is we will uh, multiply with k. We'll multiply with 2 on both sides. We'll multiply with 2 on both sides. This will be 2 times 2 raised to power k less than 2 times k factorial. So we are here multiplying two on both sides. On both sides. So here, we know from the inductive step, we know from the inductive step, And from the 
information given to us that we know that n is greater than or equal to 4, which was given to us. And the arbitrary value k that we choose is obviously going to be greater than or equal to 4. OK. So we, at the same time, uh, it's obvious that 2 is less than 4. Since 2 is less than 4, we can also say with this information that for sure 2 is going to be less than k. And using this, we can also claim that 2 is less than k plus 1. Therefore, we can rewrite this as using the above information. Uh, let me repeat it. What I said was all the numbers that we are going to choose here, n is greater than or equal to 4. That's given. Therefore, any va value, any arbitrary value that we pick, that is going to be greater than 4. And at the same time, uh, it's quite obvious uh, that 2 is less than 4, which is uh, which is like 2 for sure is less than 4. We, we, we don't have any doubt about it. So at the same time, we have to pick values only which are greater than 4. For this, we can rewrite as 2 times 2 raised power k is less than 2 times k factorial. Or we can also say that it's less than k plus 1 times k factorial. So in other words, 2 is less than 4. At the same time, we are only allowed to pick values which are greater than 4. So 2, with this information, 2 is going to be less than 4, less than k. And we can also say that 2 is less than k plus 1. So that's how I have put k plus 1 over here. Now, this entire thing on the right hand side is the same as k plus 1 factor. And this we can rewrite as when bases are same powers added, 2 times k plus 1 is less than k plus 1 factorial. So this is what we were supposed to prove. And using the inductive step pk, we're able to prove that p of k plus 1 is also true. Therefore, we are qualified or eligible to say that p of n is true. So that's how we proved it, induction. Now, I think that was all, and I will stop here. Uh, so this will be available on Blackboard. You can uh, download and watch it whenever you want. Thanks.